Hello viewers and welcome back to NATO Plays Minecraft. So we are standing in the Hall of Artificers and before I go and show you the vault which I've been working on I wanted to take a moment to talk about this series and the fact that I'm making a change. You might notice that I don't have anything in my inventory. I also don't have a health bar or uh, or XP or basically I'm in creative. Um, so I made the decision to switch this to a creative world wholesale basically because making things in survival takes a ridiculous amount of time and if I was doing this as a job uh, like a fair few people on YouTube do I would put in a lot more time and do all this in uh, in survival um, especially if I was on a survival server with people but since it's just me on this world and this series is supposed to be about building um, yeah I have made the decision to make it entirely about building and just have it in creative now there are a few rules that I'm imposing on myself firstly I'm not going to spawn in like massive amounts of things that I wouldn't be able to get hold of like I'm not gonna make entire houses out of gold or diamond blocks because to me that's just kind of boring so I'm just basically using creative as a expedience method so I won't be really using anything that I wouldn't be able to get hold of anyway um, but it does mean that I don't have to have all the tedious doing pointless things like mining endlessly when I could be doing something more productive like actually building something uh, to that point a, the uh, chests that were up here have been uh, gotten rid of and I won't be building like a little storage house this side of things uh, one of the things that I what made me decide to do this was all my stuff all my equipment disappeared and everything in the chests that were out here disappeared and a fair amount of stuff back at the home base disappeared I think it had something to do with switching between snapshots so yeah I won't be doing that again but you know, if we're in creative we're in creative and that's all that matters but anyway let's have a look at the vault so with this I kind of decided I wanted it to be below the general surface kind of hidden away and the first thing I did was build the staircase which again has a very similar pattern on the walls using andesite and stone bricks very similar to pretty much the entire layout or the entire style of lots of big bands of things and it's quite highly lit I don't know what's wrong with the stairs I think there's a lighting glitch in one of the in the current snapshot kind of these I think they count as um, transparent blocks or or not solid blocks which is what's making the lighting engine get a bit unhappy like there for instance um, but anyway so we come downstairs and this is the vault now you might be wondering why firstly there's no door so you just come down the stairs and you're into the vault straight away you know you can walk in and you can walk up to the ender chest which is going to be you know that's where they store the most crucial items but there's no big door there's no way there's nothing to stop you just walking in the other thing you might notice is there are all these pressure plates down here which uh, may or may not be something that stops you just walking in so let's have a look yep <laughs> dispensers um, so this took me a while to set up this um, that's kind of annoying actually because what's supposed to happen is and I'll talk about uh, all this redstone in a minute is uh, these were supposed to be filled with um, snowballs unfortunately seems like 
didn't want to remember that it was filled with snowballs. <coughs> I assume that's because I switched between the snapshot and a, a previous version of Minecraft because I've been messing around on a server which is known as the Play Minecraft server for those of you who know it, for those of you who don't uh, Play Minecraft is it's bench, basically a bunch of mini games and it's set up around the Minecraft people Minecraft uh, members who are a bunch of YouTubers who have their own kind of series of channels uh, okay so we step on here and it decides that it doesn't see I've gone a... there we go okay for some reason it's broken so we walk forwards and we press on we step on the pressure plates first thing that happens is everything breaks okay so this is actually quite a good video for me to uh, show you everything that's going on down here oh, apparently my clock mechanism broke okay there we go don't know why that broke but we'll talk about that in a second so what's supposed to happen is you walk forwards sneaking in you've gotten past all the guards you see the ender chest holding thousands of you know golds worth of items you sneak forward and oh no oh no ah ah and you die <laughs> so there's two well there's three systems in place here the first one is these pressure plates these pressure plates activate this line of redstone down here which do two things firstly they activate the pistons directly in front of you the, well, these pressure plates activate these blocks, which activates those pistons. I think. I think. <laughs> this was kind of a side. This is kind of a, a uh, an accident, a side effect. Because I wanted this. I wanted when you stepped on these pressure plates, any one of the pressure plates for it to trigger this line, which would trigger the whole system. But uh, it does this interesting thing of you step on one and it raises the ones in front of you and if you're standing if you're standing on one if you're stand stop it if you're standing on the one uh pressure plate it'll only raise the one in front of you but most of the time it'll be standing on two and it makes it difficult to walk past you can just jump onto the block and carry on but by the time you have worked out that's what you know that's the obvious route round you will be full of arrows if I could get like a quadruple extender, I would just have a big door that goes ch -ch 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 -ch. <clears throat> and you can turn it on and off. But uh, a quadruple extender, I thought was a little bit beyond me, so <laughs> I haven't I haven't looked at that yet. I may do at some point, but probably for another project. So let's get some normal torches. Bonk, bonk. Normal torches. Let's light up this place a bit. Let's light it up. Torches, torches. <clears throat> okay, the second mechanism here is a mechanism that opens the piston doors that reveal reveal our dispensers. And these are a kind of traditional double extender. Uh, it's a bit of a mess back here, but it works. <clears throat> so first off it takes in uh, the signal yeah it takes in the signal from the redstone from the uh, pressure plates down the, here wait no down the back yeah down the back so it's been a couple of days since I looked at this down the back it splits it off into two locations one comes to power this lamp and this is the same on both sides one powers this torch which causes both of these pistons to retract and then after a short delay um, it comes around and yeah comes up to here this signal comes up to here and after a short delay causes these two pistons or these two torches to be turned off which retracts these pistons uh, all four pistons which will retract 
both of these and the things we pulled it back. And then there's a piston down here which just retracts as the power gets turned off here, which causes the entire wall to open up. Now that's really confusing. I've done a very good job of explaining it. I apologize about that. Um, redstone's not really my kind of area of expertise. I kind of hacked this together with bits that I know. I will probably next episode try and see if I can build this in a slightly simpler way in uh, a creative world, in a blank empty world, so you can actually see it at work. But uh, the third part of it is it's simply a clock and two AND gates, or it should really be one AND gate, but uh, I ended up building two. One uh, input comes from the pressure plates and one comes from a clock, which basically means that when, well, the clock output only goes through when the pistons, well, when the pressure plates are pushed, which generates this effect. That means anyone standing on here will likely get killed as they get hit by four or five arrows. Actually, as a test, what we should do is... Oops, no! It's not firing. <clears throat> Let's go refill. Let's check how filled these are. Okay, 24. Let's... We want six... Just do that, so we go bum. Not going to be perfect, but I don't really care. I just want this to be a little bit more full before we do this. Bum, bum. Okay. Refill those, go back up onto the surface, let's close that. And game mode zero puts us into survival so we're going to sneak forwards onto the pressure plate ah ah we're being killed let's get out okay and you can quite quickly if you know about it get around it I was actually kind of interested to know <laughs> how quickly it would kill you oh and we're all the way back here okay well let's get to Actually, while we're here, let's go downstairs and just check what's in these boxes. Yeah, pretty much all of these are empty now. Anything that's worth anything is gone. Um. Oh no, we still got we still got a bit that's left, but it's mostly things that are worth anything that are gone. Including, if I remember correctly, a, uh, a wither skull. Oh well. So yeah, that is the first thing I've been working on, and I'll uh, I will try and get a proper version of that that you can look at in more detail. But I d I didn't want to have a big door with lots of piston extenders and kind of mess around with things when I could have something slightly more interesting slightly more interesting and slightly less technically demanding so I just noticed that this area is quite dark uh, so I'm just going to work out if I've gotten this there, I think it's there Nope, that was the wrong place. Presume that it's there then. Um, cat handedly doing this. Ah, okay, that might have been why. Well, I will fiddle around with that off camera. Add some extra lighting over here. It's a little dark on those steps. The other thing that I've been working on. And this is um, a little bit of a side project, is the sort of dock areas here. 
And first off, I'm not happy with how these big dock area things look like. <clears throat> they are very blank. There's not a lot of texture variation. There's just not a lot of interesting stuff on them. I tried fiddling around with um, stairs and slabs to try and get a bit of height variation in it. And it just it just didn't feel right to me. I am, however, happy with the sta the staircase, which goes all the way up to the top here, to the town circle. And you know what? Since we're actually now in creative, we can. And got some glass. Bomp. Bomp. Beacon. There we go. It currently doesn't do anything. But uh, now we have a beacon in town square. <laughs> that is probably the least kind of pompous <laughs> placing of a beacon ever. Least meaningful placing of a beacon ever. But there we go. We have a beacon. So yeah, these stairs, they are sort of seven wide, I think I ended up being, and they're diagonal, and they took me a while to get right, but they're kind of similar almost to the bridge arches underneath. I know, obviously, it's a very different uh, subject matter, but kind of the same technique of using these layers of stone bricks. Um, it kind of does work. I mean, something I did notice that on when I was doing this before, I must have been in a snapshot or something, because stone bricks were connecting, and they don't think they do that now. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, this staircase down comes down to the dock area. Um, this needs to be improved, and probably extended a bit but um, the positioning of it I'm quite happy with I do want it to be kind of another path into the city via the docks it is very close to have it's obviously very weird to have the docks very close to the town centre but it's Minecraft not anything else and I mean I am kind of technically sort of building this to be almost like an MMO style city so the proportions are a bit odd but that's what you get, I guess, for Minecraft. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you next time. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be away for a couple of days soon. You guys shouldn't, in theory, see any difference. But just in case I, for some reason, don't have access to a computer that I can get access to YouTube on, or, like phone or any myriad of other ways you access the internet these days. Uh, there might be a short cut of service, but there shouldn't be. I have enough recorded, it's just about uh, releasing it. And since I'm not a partner, I can't do funny things like uh, scheduled releases yet, which would be useful, but I need more viewers and I need more <laughs> subscribers, so please do like and subscribe and share and I'm trying to grow this channel and it's going quite well uh, at the time of recording I have 23 subscribers and almost 100 videos now almost 100 videos it'll be 100 in about two weeks for you guys this is video number 97 I think I'm recording not that I keep a desperate track on it in any case, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.